Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Ferret Face Fail Productions. So today we're out here in Moab, Utah, riding on a trail called uh, Porcupine. And I believe this is the single track portion of the single track from the 4x4 trail. Today I really wanted to talk about the overall reliability and, and uh, how happy I am and what we think of the Riehu MR Pro today. So I'm riding on here is the uh, 2022 Riehu MR Pro 300 and uh, overall it has been a really fantastic bike. In fact, I've uh, mostly got nothing but great things to say about this. It's been rented several times. Uh, multi-day rentals. I've got several, a lot of hours on it. Uh, Meeker Extreme, my business partner, also has quite a bit of time on the bike as well. And I think we've all really loved and enjoyed the bike. Right away, I always like to start with uh, some of the negative things that I have about the bikes, uh, because people generally like to know what problems you have and um, what struggles you've had, especially being a kind of an unknown European brand. And I just wanted to touch on a few of those things to begin with. Now first, um, this bike is the previous edition of the Gas Gas bike. So prior to KTM's acquisition, um, these are the, what I'm gonna call real Gas Gas bikes. And um, they are all very known for being amazing Enduros. Um, Meeker Extreme owned one for a very long time, and it was an awesome, very reliable bike. Put lots and lots of miles and time on the bike. As for mechanical failures or things that, that have broken on the bike, and uh, about the we've got about 100 hours on the bike now, um, nothing. We've had no mechanical failures of any kind, so no engine problems. Uh, no starter issues. I know the starter has always been kind of a, a controversial thing for the gas gas bikes from this era. And um, I think Riehu's redesigned starter mechanism uh, cover uh, lubricated starter, I think is is working. It seems on on the groups and stuff, there's not nearly as many problems as there used to be with the older models. The only thing that we've had happen, which was my fault for not Loctite in it, was the uh, kickstand springs uh, came loose from the bolt on the, the, the kickstand and uh, lost, lost a couple of bolts actually, but uh, that's a, not me not loctite enough items, uh, easy enough fix and to get parts as well. My biggest personal gripe, which I've said in multiple of my other videos, but I'll reiterate it here, is that uh, I really just didn't like the stock gearing of the bike. I felt uh, for a enduro two-stroke, it was geared very high. Um, first gear just felt way too tall, and maybe that's always a compromise from, from manufacturers for faster type riding or slower, so uh, very easy fix. I went to a 12 tooth on the front sprocket. Um, that was not done in this video, so since this we've we've gone to a smaller sprocket. It makes a huge difference. Uh, going to the 12 tooth up front really gives this uh, what I was looking for as far as um, gearing and power and first gear and getting over rocks and objects. Really, other than that, for negatives I have for this bike, I really don't have any others. Um, the the bike is not. Um, I mean, the seat is one thing that I don't like. Of course, all enduro bikes, the seats are not comfortable. Um, the height of the Riehu is another thing that uh, I've struggled with a little bit, but I think I've really adjusted to it. It's not a big deal anymore to me. It is taller than my betas for sure. But beyond that, uh, I can't think of anything that we've really disliked uh, about the bike. Really, it's performed quite flawlessly up till this point. Even with the, the hours and rentals on it, we've had uh, no complaints from customers either. I think the biggest possible downside that these bikes may really have is that you really set them up to each uh, personal user's um, riding style, uh, how you ride, how much throttle, where you want your power. This this engine is very versatile depending on carburetor setup, power valve setup. It's very, it's very easy to play with all the different settings. And I think uh, the way that I have it set up is definitely probably not everybody's cup of tea. I'm very conservative on the fueling. Of course, being a rental bike, I don't want people wide open throttle on it and then cooking cooking something, running too lean, trying to get every ounce of power. So I definitely run it fatter. I run it uh, very rich for bottom end torque. Um, but that being said, and I, I've also backed off the power valve hit a little bit. So um, some people, uh, the renters, uh, have not uh, been a huge fan of that, I think. That, that's uh, that's kind of 
every bike's going to be a little bit set up to your own. And, and in some ways, the Riehu and this Gas Gas platform, you really make it your own. And sometimes that's a really good thing. And sometimes it's a bad thing in the case of uh, being a rental company. If this were a, a TBI KTM, it runs how it runs from the factory. And that's how we would do it. So um, just kind of an interesting side note. Let's get into some of the updates on, on things that I've continued to really like about the bike and, and some other uh, aspects that uh, have really continued to impress me about the Riehu. How planted the bike is really, I think, is the thing that stands out to me above all else. Uh, the bike, the frame, I guess the suspension, everything and, and how it uh, works in concert really lends to a bike that is very confidence inspiring. It's very planted. It really puts down power very well and it lends it to being an easy bike to ride, a fun bike to ride, and, and also has a very light, flickable feeling. Uh, it's just an enjoyable experience. I'm not a fast rider. Uh, I don't usually push very hard, but every part of, of riding this I do feel like I ride the Riehu a little bit quicker than I have other bikes just because it's so easy to do it. Next is once again the the engine I've talked about it a little bit already it's very customizable I, in my opinion it's it's really a pro for the bike but uh, the motor feels very nice compared to other two strokes I've ridden I like how torquey it is at the bottom end I definitely appreciate that low end grunt more than more than top end power and it has plenty of top end power at that so the entire motor and everything has been very good. Um, the issues with the, the, the starter mechanism has always lingered in the back of my mind. I've had no issues, even starting in below freezing temperatures. Bike sat out all night in the freezing out in Utah, and then uh, we fired it right up. Really didn't have any problems with the, the starter. I stall a lot because I'm still kind of noobish on the slower single track and cranks every time so if it breaks we'll update it we'll let you know but so far so good i've been very happy with that and, and really don't see any downsides to the engine platform or anything else um, i do notice more vibrations than uh than some of the counter balanced engines and i've previously said that it really didn't bother me although it has kind of now that i've ridden multiple bikes back to back i can see the 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 riehu engine is definitely more vibration-esque that being said, under load when you're riding on the trails and stuff, you really don't notice it. In fact, the, the vibration is slightly more but not bad. It's when you're near idle, I think it's the worst. And when you're at cruising speed, let's just say you're doing a stint on the highway real quick or, or you know, road or whatever. Uh, yeah, the vibrations are pretty, pretty substantial at certain times. Very far and few between. I do think... Um, Overall, the engine is, is very strong, so uh, that could have gone in my con section, maybe, but I just came up when I was thinking about it. Uh, funny enough, though, uh, I really have got no complaints about the, the engine setup, carburetor setup, very easy to adjust. Oh, yeah, I'll talk about that, too, because I've done a few jetting changes on this bike. The carburetor is very easy to access, and if you're going to have a carbureted two-stroke, that's very important. Um, on the Riehu, you basically turn the carburetor sideways, pop the bottom off, you can get to the jets very easily. You can rotate it the other direction, pull the needle out, change the clip position, change your needle. Very easy setup, man. If you're going to buy one of these bikes, I heavily recommend that you change over to an NEDW Suzuki needle or a NEC series needle, NECJ. Either one of those is going to be far better than the stock needle, which is extremely rich. The customized KYB suspension, really out of the box. People say it, it's the best that you can probably get that comes stock from the factory. Um, I'm not a huge suspension guy. I don't ride super hard. I, I don't probably have a whole lot of right to talk in this area. All I know is compared to uh, our betas and other bikes that we've ridden, Everything about the suspension is planted. It feels fantastic. Very stiff setup from stock. I've got everything backed off pretty far to soften it up for what we ride and, and what my personal style is, but very easy to adjust. My only complaint maybe is that uh, I wish the KYABs had the uh, click adjusters that you could adjust by hand without uh, tools. That's really the only complaint I have there. I still really get into the price of these bikes. It is such a good value at 10,500 for a top tier bike. Now, you know, maybe it's down on power, maybe if you want um, you know, fuel injection, th those are things that this doesn't have. So you could consider that as a downgrade for the lower cost, 
But I think for the majority of people out there, this is really a top tier bike for a little bit less money. And that's awesome. And I think the MR Racing is, is a really fantastic deal at its price. You just don't get bikes like this uh, in the in the ten nine to $10,000 range uh, anymore. You really don't. I remember when I bought my Beta 390 for, for $9,000, I was stoked because it was a really good deal at the time. And now that those bikes are creeping up to, to $11,000, $12,000, depending on the dealer you're going to, it makes it really hard to choose a bike. And this is a really great option. The overall aesthetic, I still think this is one of the most beautiful bikes, best looking bikes on the market, very unique look to it. Uh, the frame shape and all that stuff is uh, quite unique. And I really appreciate uh, what Riehu de has done and, and the different uh, plastic kits that they do um, for the six days edition, stuff like that. I, I really feel like this is a unique bike. It looks markedly different than a KTM or a Beta. And that's very cool. I, I definitely appreciate that. I like uniqueness in the industry. Let's talk about parts and aftermarket support. So far, I've been very pleased with the the overall being able to go to CPD Direct and get parts right away and not be waiting forever. I've only had to order a few screws and things because I try to keep everything pretty original on, on, on the rentals. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of problems, but ordering parts has been very seamless. My only real complaint is, of course, shipping costs everywhere is very expensive, so that's been a bit of a nuisance to us. But beyond that, uh, being able to get parts, finding aftermarket support uh, has been very good. Uh, I have the P-Tech radiator guards on there, which, which uh, required some minor modifications to get the fan on there properly. But not a big deal. It was not a huge... Um, I didn't think it was that much of a pain compared to some of the other other items I've bought. Uh, the P-Tech skid plate fits around the pipe perfectly. Uh, protects the linkage very well. Very plug and play. Very happy with that. So um, aftermarket support for things that I wanted to put for protection bits is perfect. I got a few other things coming from P-Tech that I want to put on there for rotor guards and, and things like that. But beyond that, I've been very pleased that everything that I wanted to buy for the bike was easy to get, hassle-free. Parts that I've ordered from CPD has been not an issue. And that's a huge deal. You really want parts support. And I understand people's reluctance to buy bikes like these when you possibly can't get parts. But let's remember that this platform, because it's been around for a long time, that's actually a good thing. Parts availability is a lot better because they've stocked these parts essentially since 2018. And that's, uh, that means that we'll probably have continued parts for some time for these bikes. I'll talk a little bit about uh, cockpit feel, I guess I'm going to call it, is standing up on the bike is very natural. Uh, I don't know if, of course, there's no risers or anything. And I'm a little bit shorter individual as a whole, so um, at around 5'8", standing up and everything on most bikes is really, I don't need risers most of the time. But it's very relaxed, it's very comfortable. Even uh, the sitting position, while the seat itself is not very comfortable, the seating position is, is very usable. It's a very aggressive type stance. Uh, if you're going to be a lazy like me and do dumb things and sit while you ride, uh, you can definitely pull it off and shift your weight very easily. The the foot pegs and everything, it all blends very well together. It's a great experience with even the stock handlebars and everything. Um, so all that, I think, really is, is fun. The ergonomics, uh, the only thing that's weird that I've gotten used to is having the starter on the left hand. Some people report they really hate that and they've broken things and and uh, I don't mind. I've gotten used to it. It's not a big deal, but uh, I can see you can swap it over, though. It's a switch, so it's not the end of the world. Well, guys, there you have it. That's that's my update for the Riehu. I wanted to do these every so often as the bike gets more and more hours and we ride and get more experience on it. Out here in Moab, we did lots of riding out here on the Riehu. Multiple days. I've been posting the footage. Hopefully, you guys, if you haven't, go check out some more of that. But uh, this was one of my favorite sections that threw right here. It's very beautiful, very fun, some, some small ledges. But uh, nothing, nothing but great things to say about the Riehu as well as the company. And both, both are equally as important in my opinion. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Ferret Face out.